Well, praise the Lord, right? Praise the Lord. His blood avails for me. That's the reason that we can come and sing tonight. And I am certainly glad that you are here for the Oklahoma hymn sing. We are glad that we can worship and lift our voices in praise. In case you don't know, let me introduce this group to you. This is the Oklahoma Baptist Symphony, the Singing Churchmen of Oklahoma, the Singing Churchwomen of, o Women of Oklahoma, the Oklahoma Student Worship Choir, actually, is over here, and the Oklahoma Baptist Children's Chorus. All of these groups have come together tonight, and uh, we want to join with you. We want to have you join us as we lift our voices. Each year, these groups go all around Oklahoma, sometimes overseas, but mostly we go all around Oklahoma from August to all the way through May. We have two objectives. We want to advance the gospel, and we want to encourage the church. And who's the church? You and me. And you know, there's all, all of us, we have times that we need encouragement. So we are glad to uh, join with you as we partner wherever you serve, whatever church you attend. And uh, we're glad that you're here tonight with us. Listen, I know you have a program in your hand. I hope that you do. I just want to say we're thankful for the, these groups and the leaders of these groups. And also we're thankful we have our leaders of our executive team and many others here with Oklahoma Baptist. These men and some women, they lead us well. They take us through some of the things that are going on in our society today. And so I want to say for them, and I encourage you to continue to pray for them and support them as they lead Oklahoma Baptist. You're going to hear from some of them later on as we continue to worship together. But right now, I'd like for you to, to uh, meet the pastor of this fine church, Keith Burkhart, and he's going to come and give a welcome and just say uh, he wants you to all come back next Sunday. Well, that's I can tell you for sure. Amen. Can I get an amen from that? Amen. Oh, seriously, from First Southern Family, we want to welcome you here tonight. And this is what we want. We want to make much of Jesus with you. We want to see God glorified, God the Father. And we want to see people that may not know Jesus that are here tonight put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And so God bless you. I do want to give you a couple of housekeeping details. When you leave tonight, it will make your departure much easier if you will split our parking lot in half. If you're going to I-240, Turning left on Sooner Road, go to the left two exits. If you're going north, the other directions towards I-40, turn right at those two sections. It will help our traffic. Be careful pulling out on Sooner Road. Now, let me leave you a verse before I pray. Bless our God, O peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard. Psalm 66, 8. And so tonight, we want to bless the Lord God. We want to make our praise known and heard by him. So join me in prayer. Father, we thank you for the gift of praise. And God, these are just small reminders of the glory of heaven when every tribe and tongue is standing before you singing for eternity. And so God, tonight, bless this evening. Lord, we thank you for the talent that you've blessed us with, with the musicians and the chorals groups. Lord, bless them tonight as they lead us in worship. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, it's been interesting. This has really been four years in the making, this, this night right here. We planned it before uh, COVID hit, and that kind of uh, put a stop to everything, as you're aware, and then... It's been resurrected, and uh, we just long to hear people's voices as they lift their praise to the Lord. Let me tell you how this week has rolled out for me, and that is I've been getting emails, calls, texts. We're praying for Thursday night. Here's, what they're, here's what's interesting. It's not like we're praying, you know, you keep your strength up, we're praying for the songs, we're praying for a great crowd. Here's the, here's the prayer. Many times scriptures came with it, prayers came with it. We're praying for revival to break out Thursday night. So can we say amen to that? So I want to say to you, this is 
uh, I know it's kind of a concert format, but I want you to feel free. We've got a huge place up here. If the Spirit so prompts you, you feel free to come up and pray. You feel free to stand. This is a place of worship. It's a place of freedom. So we would invite you to join with us as we do. I want to invite you to do something that every musician on this platform has done. It's what the songwriter implores us to do. He says this, tune my heart to sing thy grace. So tonight, as we begin, you do just that. You ask God to tune your heart to receive, but also to lift him as we sing together. You sing this with me. Come thou fount of every breath. Full of eyes in front and behind, 
The first living creature like a lion, the second living creature like an ox, the third living creature with the face of a man, and the fourth living creature like an eagle in flight. And the four living creatures, each of them with six wings, are full of eyes all around and within. And day and night, they never cease to say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come.
and at his feet peace of mind can still be found he still has a need I know Child to Jesus, oh child, you're standing on holy ground. We are standing on holy ground. And I will. But as for me, I will not boast in anything except the cross of my Lord Jesus Christ. Because of the cross, my interest in the world has been crucified, and the world's interest in me has died.
From Calvary's mountain, in the cross, in the cross, be my glory ever. Sing this with us, please.
you feel like shouting glory or something tonight, because I'm going to ask you to stand and sing this song with me. Let's sing together. Ready? How great the chasm that lays between Into the night, then through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written. Jesus Christ, my Lord.
have a seat if you would, please. I tell you what, you know, Oklahoma Baptists are fortunate that we have a place called Falls Creek. Amen? So many memories and stories, and here's the good news. They're still being made because lives are being changed every week at Falls Creek. And so we're thankful for that. What a great heritage and what a great opportunity that we have been given because of that place. I want to uh, in, encourage you and invite you to, to join with us as we kind of reflect on some of those songs. There was a gentleman, many of you might know him, they called it Uncle Gene. And um, you can remember that name. So for many, many years, he was down at Falls Creek. And, and uh, back in the, it was the, kind of the good old days. Um, and that old tabernacle, you remember, you know, so hot. Fortunately, man, praise the Lord, we have that new one, right? The, the air conditioning. But uh, the stories were that the, uh, the people around Davis and the, those mountains down there, when Falls Creek was in session, they could hear the sounds of the students and people praising and worshiping all through the hills. I'd like to have heard that, wouldn't you? But uh, every, every week that Uncle Gene was down there, at least once a week, he would uh, tell the people, he would say, I want you to stand and sing a song my daddy wrote. And it goes like this. It's called Victory in Jesus. And here is Gene, Uncle Gene, I want you to sing. 1969 at Falls Creek. Our Savior came from glory. How he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. So some of you might be in that picture. I don't know. I heard about his groaning of his precious blood's atoning. Then I repented of my sin and won the victory. Oh.
what an incredible privilege it is for me to speak tonight about a subject that is dear to my heart. I remember hearing John Bassanio many times when we were raising the money for the new tabernacle. He would get up and say these words. There are, are besides my Lord Jesus, my wife and my children's name, there are two words that are more precious to me than any others. Falls Creek. <laughs> and those words are ever precious to me. Tonight I want to talk a bit about the impact of Falls Creek. It really is couched in three different words that I think help us to think about what Falls Creek means. The first one is praise. You know, the scripture in Psalm 22, 3 says that God is enthroned on the praises of his people. Or another translation says he inhabits the praises of his people. Now that ought to give us great comfort. He's here tonight, amen? amen. But one of the reasons that Falls Creek has had such an impact across the years is because Every time you drive on the grounds, every time you walk under the old tabernacle or the intermediate tabernacle on the hill or into that beautiful new tabernacle now, the key to everything that happens there is that God inhabits the praises of his people. God shows up. And the reason he does, because those tabernacles have been filled with the glorious praises to our God and to our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Didn't matter whether it was B.B. McKinney leading a song that he wrote there called Wherever He Leaves, I'll Go, and you know it has Falls Creek as its hymn to name. Or whether it was Uncle Gene. I remember that's when I first went to Falls Creek, when Uncle Gene, and I remember the impact that he had on my life as I listened to him and watched him lead. I wanted to do music at that time. And by the way, all the choirs of America are thankful I don't. <laughs> but I can still remember him with those big arms lifted, leading all of us to praise the Lord Jesus Christ, who is our Savior and our Lord. And everything we sang was filled with glory to him. And then when I was a little boy, my mama used to bring me to Falls Creek, set me on her lap, and let me listen to Bill Green lead music. Okay, that's a lie. But it's a good one, amen? I can't even begin to tell you what it was like every Thursday night when he would we would always, everybody anticipated, knew exactly what was getting ready to happen because he was getting ready to lead us in save, save, save. And this little old red-headed boy from nowhere stood on over in the corner with the timpanis and he played that drum roll, remember? He happens to be a United States Senator now, but he was just a little kid back then. But here's what I want you to hear about the impact of the praises. As I traveled this state, I would go into churches, and on Sunday morning, guess what? We were trying to imitate what Bill was doing at Falls Creek. Imitate it in a good way. We wanted our churches filled with the praises to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? The impact of Falls Creek impacted all of our churches, and it impacted our lives. This little sky tooth boy had never been in a place where there would be five, 6,000 young people singing praises. I had never heard such a thing. And I've never been the same since. But the other key is preaching. The simple gospel of Jesus Christ, the commitment of Falls Creek has always been that when you stand in that pulpit, whether you're a preacher from Oklahoma or some guest from somewhere else, when you stood to preach, you preached the, the unashamed, unabashed, clear, simple gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Because it is the power of God unto salvation. And so, when we would, when men would preach, I can tell you this, if they, I, I have heard men preach in their pulpits in their churches, but when they got on the platform of Falls Creek, something changed. 
It was the glory of the Holy Spirit on their life. Amen. And the invitation was always clear. To come to Christ, return to holiness, and a call to ministry. And the reason the impact of Falls Creek is so great to the ends of the earth is because of that constant call. And the missionaries, and, the, and the, I met missionaries all over the world, and I can tell you the mission board continually said to us, no place on earth has had more missionaries called than Falls Creek. That's why it impacts the world. And when we were studying and, and getting ready to raise the money for the tabernacle, we found out that 40% of the preachers and staff members in our churches had either been saved or called at Falls Creek. Now that's a world impact, amen? Yeah. I close with this. Here's the impact of Falls Creek. The reason everything transpired, the reason God could inhabit the praises of his people, which were glorious, amen, they were glorious. And the reason that he could impact the lives of people when they walked into that place, when that invitation was extended, hundreds would come to Christ because of the prayers of God's people. No place on earth has ever been prayed for like those weeks at Falls Creek. And I'm going to tell you something. Heaven came down and glory filled our soul. And I can't wait tonight until we hear save, save.
Amen? Amen. Well, you know, I, we've got to do it, right, Dr. Jordan? Are you ready? We've got, we've already had Gene Bartlett, with B.B. McKinney, Gene, or Bill Green, come on right up here. And let's have it so excited. Dr. Green. My younger brother sitting down here on the front row. When I was 17 years of age, in Elk City, Oklahoma, I walked the aisle one cold winter night and took the preacher by the hand and said, I want to lead people to sing for the Lord as long as I have breath in my body. And that was 62 years ago, and I'm still leading people to sing for the Lord. I never get tired of leading people to sing for the Lord. Little did I know, as a 17-year-old lad, that years later, I would stand on the stage at Falls Creek and lead those wonderful young people singing the praises of the Lord. And it kind of got to be famous when you do save, save, save. If you're going to be famous, that's a good one to be famous for. <laughs> so you need to stand up, friends. Let's do save, save, save.
<laughs> wow. My mentor and my hero, Bill Green, many of you could say the very same thing. Thank you all for being here tonight. <laughs> Pastor Keith, Colton, Michael, Justin, Drew, Daniel, the staff, the church members here at First Southern, thank you for your gift of hospitality to us. We receive it and we're grateful. Thank you. Well, my friends, we want to take an offering tonight, if you don't mind. Uh, it will go to the expenses and the ministries of all of these groups. We split it into a percentage of the best looking to the least good looking. <laughs> and tonight, I think the biggest majority of our offering will go to the children's chorus tonight. <laughs> And the churchman might get the least. But <laughs> if you make a check out, please make that out to First Southern Baptist Church. They've promised us that they will turn that around and send it right into the worship ministry office at the Baptist building. Uh, there's a QR code. Is that up? Yes. If you'll take your phone, take my picture first, and then go to the, <laughs> go to the Q QR code. That'll give you some instructions on the worship ministry page, and you just have a, a, a button there that you can press, and you can give online. We do take credit cards, and if you'll just drop those in the baskets. <laughs> when we reach our goal, we'll send them back to you later this week. <laughs> no, now, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't put your credit cards in the basket. But we are, we're just so grateful to be a part of this great evening. It, it, it's good to be at First Southern Baptist Church and to see this many people fill up this worship center. Brother Keith, I know you're encouraged tonight. Thank you. Well, let's pray and then let's give as the Lord leads you to give to the ministries that you see here on this platform. Father, we are so grateful for your love for us. And Father, we know that by your hand we are blessed. And we know that many people walked in in the shadow of grief or the cloud of sadness it brought some baggage into this place Lord and I know because of the light of Christ has shown that those winds have blown across their hearts and we're enjoying our time in the light of Christ in this place and father I pray that you'll continue to move in the hearts of those that are seeking you and father I pray as these people give that this money will go to help each one on this platform to be able to continue to serve across the street in our cities, in this state, across our country, and around the world. And Father, I thank you for each of these people that have come to be a part of this. And I pray as you give, I pray as they give, you will bless them. I pray it in Christ's name. Amen.
remember this song? There is coming a day when the heart aches and no more clouds in the sky, no more tears to dim the eye. All is peace forevermore on that happy golden shore.
let's sing. celebrate God's faithfulness in your life can you not there's a great song that I want you to join with me in singing it's also gives testimony ladies I want you to start it is well with my soul let's sing it together when
you need a savior in times like these you need
Well, hi, everybody. I'm right here in Indiana, my first trip to Indiana, and I'm in the Bill Gaither studios with my friend, Bill Gaither. I, I can't believe that I'm actually here. It's gonna be a great time as we talk with Bill about some of the songs that he has written. And I know that Bill was just recently in Oklahoma with the Oklahoma Homecoming. And uh, Bill, we wanna ask you when that's gonna be available and uh, when can we expect to be able to hear the Oklahoma Homecoming? Yes, we taped that back, uh, back in August and people said, why did you do it in August? And I said, I remember when I was a kid that uh, after air conditioning uh, came in, in the South, if you wanted to get a good crowd, you would have something in a nice air conditioned building in July or August, because people wanted to get out of the heat. Even being at the lakes uh, was, uh, was too hot for them. So I thought August would be a great time, and it did turn out, because we had a massive crowd, and the people were very kind. But our history in Oklahoma goes way, way back. When we were kids in college, way before you were born, I'm sure. Uh, we used to go down there and, and sing uh, throughout Texas and Oklahoma. So we love uh, Oklahoma. And that particular building, uh, the ORU building, Baby Center, was built for singing because, boy, when those people sing. It was fantastic. And so uh, I want to thank you for bringing that to Oklahoma. And we'll look forward to seeing it and uh, hearing it when it comes available. You know, one of the things as uh, Oklahoma Baptists that we're really uh, fortunate to have God has blessed us with is Falls Creek. And I know your history with Oklahoma uh, goes back with the singing churchmen and... Uh, Gene Bartlett. Gene, that's right. Tell us some of your memories and kind of what you, uh, what you remember about that time. And, and we re refer to him as Uncle Gene. I know it and people loved him. And it was fun for me to have the, uh, the extra time to sit around the table with a cup of coffee and just pick his brain because his daddy, E.M. Bartlett, right. wrote Victory in Jesus. Victory in Jesus. And of course, Gene got his love for four-part harmony from his dad. So You've written so many songs and um, so many great songs that have been commercially successful and have been sung all over the world and literally written the hymnal, you know, the hymn book for us. And uh, I wondered if there was a song that maybe did not achieve commercial success, but a song that was, you thought, that was particularly special to you. When I'm asked that question, uh, there are several songs that, uh, that come to mind because they're all your babies. Mm -hmm and they're very, very important to you. But one that surfaces to the top most of the time is a, is a song that we wrote called I Believe. Help thou my unbelief. I take the finite risk of trusting like a child. And I love this song, first of all, scripture. Mm -hmm. And I love that song because it does give room for doubters at the table. I had a friend one time who said, uh, do Christians doubt? And I said, well, we're human beings and doubting is part of the process. Mm. And I said, and Jesus treated the doubters with total respect. Mm -hmm. When Thomas uh, said, you know, I've been down this road so many times and I'm not gonna believe this and I'm not gonna go down this road again unless I can, you know, see it for myself. Yeah. And Jesus said, he didn't turn him away. He just said, touch, you know. I, I love that song. It says, I long so much to feel the warmth that others seem to know. Because I think sometimes when people on the outside look in at our worship services and seeing people who are totally involved, mm -hmm. tears down, running down their face, hands in the air, and they're totally involved they think, I wish I could feel that. Mm -hmm. But the line says, I long so much to feel the warmth that others seem to know, but should I never feel a thing, I claim him even so. Like, wow. That's a Gloria lyric, so there I can brag go. on it. So mm -hmm. I believe, help thou my unbelief, I walk into the unknown, trusting as a child. And we've had a lot of people to write us, email us, and contact us and say, 
I know you don't sing that song a lot, but it's been very meaningful to me in some pretty dark days of my life. Mm -hmm. So thank God for it. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah was certainly a God thing. It, that was the first bona fide uh, million selling record by the record industry. There are, there are initials that go with it, REEs or something or right. other. But it was, it, there were actually a million copies sold and it was only meant, it wasn't an artist record, it was only meant to be a demo, a demo record for churches yeah. to use it. To use it. Well, I, uh, I just wondered, did, uh, did you have any ideas you were starting out? I know, I mean, I read your book, right? Mm -hmm. So I kind of know a little bit about your story. So, you know, God just continued to open doors, but you remained faithful to Him and, you know, to be, you know, to be centered on on sharing the gospel, centered on those lyrics and making sure everything was done right and done the right way for the right reason. Uh, did you even have any of this in mind uh, along, along the way that, that it would happen like this? You know, a writer writes because he has to write. And let me go even farther than that. I think secular writers, I mean, good secular writers mm -hmm. write because it, I think when Hank Williams wrote, hear that lonesome whippoorwill, mm -hmm. it sounds too blue to fly. The, the midnight train is whining low. I'm so lonesome I could cry. I don't think he wrote it for money or for fame or praise or anything. He wrote it because he lost his girlfriend. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. Know? He had to write this song. Get it out. And I think Christian writers write because their love for the Lord mm -hmm. and the fact that somebody else thinks it's good mm -hmm. is just kind of amazing because because we were like any other writer back in 62, 63. We've, we've been married for 60 years. Yeah. The, these were just songs that that were coming out of our hearts. And we sang them in our local church. Mm -hmm. And our local church said it's pretty good. And so pretty soon somebody over in Anderson, which is 10 miles away from our local church, <laughs> said, would you come over and do that at our church? And then somebody from another county. And then somebody from another state. And then somebody from Norway and from Hungary mm -hmm. and from Brazil. I mean, that's pretty amazing when all you wanted to do was just sing a song for your local church. Right. This is also true with worship songs because many of the writers of worship songs are just in a local church yeah, and they they're writing songs for the local church. So I tell any creative person, write what God you know, has given you, what you feel, just go ahead and do that. And I think Because He Lives is a good example. We wrote that uh, when Gloria was pregnant for uh, our third child, Benji. At the end of the 60s, beginning of the 70s, this country was pretty unstable. We look at this particular time and say, man, things are going to hell in a handbag. Well, at the end of the 60s, you know, Watts was burning, cities were burning, Absolutely. assassinations of our leaders, and uh, the Vietnam War and the protests of the war. The God is dead theory was big in public institutions. The whole drug business was basically starting then. And we, and I think we didn't say it in this way, but we said, why would anybody bring a child into a world like this that is so mm -hmm. unstable? And I guess after we thought about it for a while, we had to come to the conclusion and if you read very much history, history has proven this world has never been very stable. In fact, the time that Jesus came into the world was a pretty turbulent time mm -hmm. and very, very unstable. You don't have kids because the world is stable. You don't have kids because everything is going right. Mm -hmm. You bring children into the world because <clears throat> Christ is real. He was born of a virgin. He lived and he died and he rose again and the resurrection is true. And the darker the night, the brighter the light. And you plunge on through saying, this child can face uncertain days because he lives. That's right. Yeah, we're getting ready to sing that song and some other things great songs that, that uh, you and Gloria have written. And uh, I just want to thank you for your time. Uh, I just want to thank you personally 
as a minister of music, as someone that's been involved in music uh, my whole life. Uh, thank you for giving so much to me personally and what you've given to the church, not only here in, in the United States, but really to believers all around the world. You've given us hope and you've given us a song and an example uh, of, of a godly man that has pointed us always to the cross. So thank you for what you've done and you're still writing songs and we thank you for what you're still doing. Randy, you're so kind and a joy to talk with you today. And uh, we love Oklahoma. <laughs> Well, Oklahoma loves you. We want you to come back. I know you've got a lot of friends there. Yeah. Let's sing this together. Ready? God sent His Son. They called Him Jesus. He came to
of you can say amen to that? Amen. Life is worth living just because he lives. Will you sing this with me? Jesus, 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 there's a sun. before Dr. Fisher comes and has a final word for us tonight, would you just sing this? Let this be our prayer. Holy Spirit, breathe on me. And let's leave this place with a freshness in our hearts and in our lives as we go to serve and to share and worship him. Sing this. Holy Spirit,
Wow, what an evening tonight. And I think as we come to the, to the close of this evening, uh, I don't know about y'all, but with all the standing and sitting and standing and sitting and tapping my foot, I kid you not, I closed two exercise rings on my watch. <laughs> and of course, I am not joking. I closed two of them. So uh, I'm gonna go home and have a dessert or something. I'm burning the calories. I, I think as we come to the close, I think it is only fitting that we give a very enthusiastic thank you to everyone on this stage. They have been here all day rehearsing. Let's just give them a thank you. Randy Brothers, thank you for putting this together for us. It was really a tremendous evening. And uh, he's done a phenomenal job. Thank you, Bill. Appreciate you. Uh, I, I, had a few, I had a few comments prepared, but I'm going to tell you, I just got overwhelmed by something through the course of this evening. Uh, don't take this the wrong way. It dawned on me I'm one of the youngest guys in this room. <laughs> Do you know what that means? What that means, as we see here, is a legacy. And I, I got to thinking what we've seen tonight. I heard Dr. Jordan speak. I got to watch Bill Green lead and save, save, save. Even James Wayne and I were joking, there's been a hornet flying around here. We were right at home for Falls Creek. <laughs> Just turned the temperature up about 40 degrees and we are in the tabernacle, right? Let me tell you something. This has been an incredible evening. Look around this room. There's no telling how many Baptist churches are represented in this room. Big church, small church, city church, rural church, you name it. On November the 9th, 1906, the Baptist General Convention of Indian Territory had its final session in the First Baptist Church of Shawnee. And the Baptist Convention of the State of Oklahoma had its first, had its final session in the First Methodist Church of Shawnee. And at a set time, those two state conventions walked out of those buildings and they came together and they lined up in a long line, two by two. And they walked from those churches to the Shawnee Opera House. And as they walked, they sang, just like we're singing tonight. And the song they sang was, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. And I want to tell you something. Ever since then, for over a hundred years, you know what Oklahoma Baptists have learned? We do more and we do better together than we do apart. Amen. Now, I want to tell you something. You, you see it right here. Maybe you saw the messenger. We're going to be making a big thing of this next week. But you know about the middle of February, when you add all the cumulative gifts that Oklahoma Baptist churches have given to the cooperative program since it started almost 100 years ago? Did you know that in the middle of February, you add up all the gifts that just Oklahoma Baptist churches have given to CP, not counting Annie or Lottie or Edna, just to CP. Did you know that we surpassed $1 billion to kingdom causes? Who just the cooperative program. It's amazing. And so I kind of joked I'm kind of the younger guy, but I want, I want this group to hear me say that just what Dr. Jordan told you about what makes Falls Creek special, that is a legacy that is going to continue with the next generation. This state convention will stand unashamedly, unapologetically, on the Word of God. And even though we live in a culture, we live in a culture that's running about as fast as it can away from God and His Word, we Oklahoma Baptists will not deviate from the Word of God as our foundation. And, and we will not deviate from the mission that God has given us to advance the gospel, not just in Oklahoma, but all over the world. 
And so I just, I think it's such a special evening to see such a legacy here tonight. I'm blessed by that. And I'm excited to see what God is going to continue to do in the next generation and the next generation of Oklahoma Baptists. We have sang tonight our story. I kept thinking of Blessed Assurance. This is my story. Look at all the different titles, the subjects in the, in the program tonight. We've sang our story. And so here's, I want to just give you this challenge tonight. I, I was in the First Baptist Church of Blair, Oklahoma this morning. If you don't know where Blair is, you can see Texas from there. <laughs> And I was doing a little preaching clinic for the pastors of the Great Plains Baptist Association. And I was telling those guys this morning, uh, I was saying, you know, a, a good sermon, a good biblical sermon has the indicative and the imperative in it. That's two fancy words for the truth and the call to action. The Bible is given to us like that. The Bible is not just given to us to inform us. God gave us the Bible to transform us. And my challenge to you tonight is this. We sang the words tonight. We sang the story tonight, but have you really made it your story? Have you acted upon the gospel that we have sung tonight? Are you going to walk out of here tonight as a changed person, a person who has died to self and following Christ? So I want to tell you, I'm sitting right over here, and Dr. Jordan's sitting over here, and Keith Burkhart, and James Wayne, and Joe Ligon, and Alan Quigley. There's a whole bunch of people here that would love to tell you how you can be a follower of Jesus Christ. And if you're not a follower of Christ tonight, I pray that tonight you will make that commitment. And you can come find one of us, and we'd love to visit and pray with you. And all the rich truth of God's Word that we have sang tonight, would you go now, and would you obey? And would you live out what God tells us in his word? What a wonderful evening. We rejoice and give God the praise for this rich music, this rich story that we can sing and we can live. We do thank you for coming. That's the first half of the concert. Thank you. <laughs> No. We do have one song to finish with tonight. It's a song that uh, we were trying to, what, what hymn should we finish the Oklahoma hymn sing with? And we decided on this song that has literally gone around the world like so many other hymns. The song, Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound, That Saved a Wretch Like Me. We're going to finish with this song, and uh, we just want to, again, say thank you for coming for sharing this evening with us and for making it uh, special as we continue to tell the story it just so happens that this year is the 250th anniversary of amazing grace so we picked the right time and the right song to end this beautiful evening and thank you for coming <laughs>